Macy, as you know, she is the librarian, and I will allow Macy to tell you all about this new story. Macy, take the chicken. <laughs> right, now you tell the story. <laughs> Mission to the Philippines. This is an interactive text story linking video footage about our Christian mission to the Philippines, seeking to bring the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to all men, and in particular, those in prisons. There are 20 videos accessed by the URL links placed as footnotes at the bottom of each page of the book. The book text tells the story, but the footnotes are the videos. Take time to view the videos listed in turn to get the whole story. Go through the pages of the book and view the video titles mentioned, then come back to the page and take up the story. The YouTube video playlist is called Trojan Horse and Redeemer. I don't know any other person like my dad who has had adventure after adventure. Not only intriguing and thrilling, but also dangerous. The story is now available for you. So please get set. Fasten your seatbelts and enjoy. Links at the bottom of video for access. I'm going to talk about the motor vessel Ludsboat Caster, once called Redeemer, and her connection with our mission to the Philippines. Alistair should have been here, but he's missed the bus. I first met Alistair in 2002. He was a young man then, just 70 years old, but now he's nearly 80, and what you might call an old sea dog. This was soon after our return from our mission to the Philippines in December 2001. Gordon Smith and I had been to the Philippines working in the prison cities and in particular New Bilibid Maximum Security Prison. My brother Michael was an inmate who had been sent there in 1996 to prison and was serving a 16 year sentence. We had gone to bring help and relief to him in October 2001. On my return to England I met Alistair. I became interested in the ship because it sounded an ideal answer to our needs and could be used to further our mission work. It was at that time in Holland and could be brought to Portsmouth and put into service. It was 46 metres long and a cabin capacity of 40. It was a beautiful ship built in the 50s, 1950, and was one of seven. It was a coaster and it is believed to have been reserved for the Dutch royal family during the Cold War. Alastair informed me of the Redeemer's history and his connection with it. He told me of his two friends, Dennis Collins and Maurice Bitty. Dennis Collins was the captain of a ship called Logos at the time, whilst Maurice was its chief officer. It was in 1979 and the Vietnamese were in serious trouble and many boat people had to be rescued. The communists were persecuting them and they were escaping in their boats. Now the Logos stumbled across these boat people in the South China Sea. They had nowhere to go and their boats were being destroyed by sea pirates. There was about a hundred or so. Nobody wanted to help these people but these men did and got into an international trouble. They had no passport, no visas, you can imagine, and no one was prepared to help them. The pirates had robbed and killed their victims, some of them, and cast them into the sea and raped some of their women. This sparked off the idea in Morris Vitti to purchase his own ship to do Christian work. It was then that he purchased the Castor, which was one of seven built in 1950. Then he renamed her Redeemer. The ship set off to the South China Seas, but ended up in Malta, 
and remained there till 1997 doing various mission work. Alistair, meanwhile, having worked on various ships, YWAM ships, Mercer ships, one called Anastasis and the other called Good Samaritan, was then asked if he would take the Redeemer or look after the Redeemer for a period and then take it to Falmouth where it had been sold and then on to Holland in Yerk, Yerk in Holland. It was the knowledge of this ship and its history that had caught my attention and it sounded ideal for our use, the purpose of which I will tell you about in a moment. So with Alistair's help we went off to Holland to see the ship. At this stage you can watch video one. Uh, but don't do it now because it's about 20 minutes long. Look at it afterwards. Listen to the rest of this video. Go back. There is a playlist at the end here. You can select all the videos that I've put up. There's about 20 or 30. Well, our mission work. We were involved in dealing with those who had been in crime and been criminals in the past. Killers, murderers, rapists. And some have been in jail for 20 years and they had to be released. Now, Having been like that for 20 years, being released in the Philippines, without getting work, it, the natural inclination would be to revert back to crime. The only way to prevent that would be to educate such men, give them tools to get back into business. The problem is, though, what we found out, was that if you educate a car thief, then with his education, he'll steal an aircraft and then fly it into Twin Towers. And it happened, of course. But if you educate a man who's turned around, he has skills and abilities that could be put to good use and become a valuable asset to society. And we could bring hard evidence to demonstrate this fact to you. And this was our mission, to help people who have been rehabilitated and help them get back into society. The reason why we went to the Philippines was because my brother Michael, although he'd been sent to jail, and I was shocked at the knowledge of his crime. I don't wish to be pharisaical, uh, but uh, I was not always a good lad, good boy. We, I've, I've broken the law in the past, but I was ashamed of his arrest initially. But I'll talk about that later. However, when Gordon and I went to the jail, having learned about Michael's experience of becoming a Christian, it was during that mission that Gordon and I were overwhelmed with the good work being done by religious volunteers in helping and assisting criminals who were being converted from crime to Christ. On our first mission, we went down from New Bidibri Prison down to Angeles City Jail and then Alongapo District Jail in Barreto. And on that occasion, Trojan Horse International, because that's what our mission name was or is, we appointed a young pastor, Monaco Karami, to the position of mission worker or outreach worker. See his video, video number two, Angelis City Jail, Monica Karani. Now, New Bidibid Prison is the largest prison in Asia's Far East, and it houses over 23,000 inmates, or it did at the time, in three compounds, the maximum, the medium, and the minimum compounds. Now, Michael was in the maximum security compound, which housed over 13,000 inmates. It also contains death row, in which there are, at that time, 1,200 men due to die by lethal injection. There's the death chamber. There's a guard, a guard post, and there's the typical guard with an M16 rifle. Now, Sonny Wilson was an Englishman, the first Englishman to be sentenced to death in the Philippines in 1996 for a crime he didn't do. He was set up for this crime, and it was all to do with money and jealousy. Anyway, to cap it all, when Sonny Wilson was released in December 1999, he came to see me at my home because he knew Michael, and Michael gave him my address. And he came to tell me of Michael's plight, and taught me and showed me that Michael's crime, what he'd been charged with, that he wasn't guilty of, and he was fighting his appeal. But Sonny Wilson has his own story and there's a full video that was aired on British TV there it is video number three um, go and watch it it's called sentenced to death <coughs> Sonny Wilson YouTube video three sentenced to death Sonny Wilson now when Mike when, when Sonny came to me I'd learned of Michael's uh, conversion from crime to Christ and 
Michael himself, in 1998, had actually come to an end of himself. And he was losing his teeth, he's lost his weight, he was terrified, he's depressed, he's afraid of dying, he didn't want to die, he was in agony. Anyway, he read a book that Sonny Wilson had given him, Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. And Michael, through reading that book, was convinced that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. And like me, years earlier, he searched the scriptures, read various Christian books and learned the gospel himself. Now, there were many Christians and religious groups in the prison. Lucas Dangatton was one of them. He was a former robber, robbery with violence. He'd been sent to jail, came out of the jail in 1985, went back to the prison as a religious volunteer in 1990. Now, Michael's conversion is told by himself. He recorded it on audio tape. Here it is. I've put it on YouTube. Video 4. Watch it. Michael's testimony. Now, Michael was baptised as a believer in the prison by Lucas, Peter and Captain Darius in an oil drum. And it was knowledge of this that moved Gordon and I to go on that mission to the Philippines. And that's why I wrote my story and published my book, Converted on LSD Trip, on the 11th of February 2001, which is exactly 30 years to the day to that story appearing on the news headlines in, in, Buck's, paper, in the Buck's paper. Anyway, there we are. <clears throat> the book was published Gordon got news of the book being published he contacted me after 20 years and we decided there then to go to the Philippines to help Michael and at that time I had this knowledge or this scriptural verse come to me to cast your net on the other side of the ship and uh, scripture says Peter the response to this word of Jesus was that and he was astonished. And they that were with him, the draught of fishes that were caught. And I read into this verse, it was almost like this was saying, you worked in England as teaching the way of God since you, your conversion. Now go and cast your net the other side of the world, you'll be surprised at the draught of fishes to be caught. So, there he goes. And then it, it, it appeared in the newspaper, there's our mission to see Michael, I pray, can I help my suit, my criminal brother? And there it is, newspaper in Portsmouth. Right, we've spoken about Michael's baptism. Lucas P. Dan Gatton has his own profile in the book, Trojan Warriors, which we've written. You can go and watch that. Go to the website. The reference is, is in the book. There we are. Now, these men in the jail were helping themselves, like self-help groups. And they were teaching skills like that, teaching the gospel, paralegal skills, communication skills and education, all tools that people that have been inside need when they get on the out. And we had hoped to train some of these men out to go back to their own cities and towns to teach the gospel and tell them all what the Lord had done for them. There's William Pollock. He was one of the men that was sent. He was in jail for 14 years. His testimony is number 62 in our book, Trojan Warriors. Uh, he went back to his own city in, in Baguio City Jail and then get jail teaching the gospel. We funded him until January 2003 uh, with 6,600 pesos a month and he did a very good job and he's founded two churches since then and a theological institute. And go and watch that video, video number eight, William Pollock, our first mission sent. We sent him, a mission officer from Trojan Horse. There's some of the men in New Bit of Big Prison, the teachers, and there's an aerial view of the prison. 12 hectares in that 12 hectare area. It's a former concentration camp used by the Japanese in the Second World War. There are Catholics, born again, Evangelical, Baptist, Seventh day Adventist, you name it, they're all there. Michael, like me, when I was age of 20, once he'd become a Christian, he read the Bible himself, read lots of Christians, learned the gospel without the gloss of all the stupid religious stuff that goes on today. Now, I would be very sceptical at somebody telling me a story like this, but the fact is it's true, it's real. Okay, now, when Gordon and I were so aware, we went to see the Undersecretary of Justice of the Philippines, and we said, look, we, we, want, to, we want to establish and set up a teacher training college in the jail. Lucas would running it with Michael and so on, the other inmates. And the Under-Secretary of Justice said, yes, that's fine. We could then 
we asked to bring other inmates from the medium security compound into the maximum security compound so we could teach them the gospel, the way of reformation, to help these men uh, rehabilitate. And that's what it was all about. We went to see the director. We actually went to see the prison director and his staff, see video nine, and we prayed with the video, with the director and his staff, and you can hear the prayer. You know, and that prayer, we believe God has answered our prayer. And you read it, it's, it's remarkable what took place. As a result of that, we went and asked a hundred men in that jail. Michael and I requested a hundred men write their testimonies of conversion from crime to Christ. And that's what we did, and publish it in our book called Trojan Warriors. So th we did this the next year. When we returned to England, and I met Alistair, Alistair helped me compile these testimonies. They were being sent backwards and forwards by the internet and by post by Lucas Dungat, and the front cover of the book designed by artists in the prison. And we together put this good book together and publish it. Now, the point is, it's all about not going back into trouble and being converted, and we it works. I mean, we know from experience we're talking reality, right? Michael had turned from crime to Christ. Like many of the men in this jail, William Pollock had too, so had Lucas Dungat, and I had 30 years previous to that, so we all experience what we call the transforming work of God in converting from crime to Christ. And we were prepared to do this work, we were prepared to help this work, this kind of Christian work, both in the Philippines and the UK. Now, go to our website to view the playlist and watch the listed videos at your leisure, www.trojanhorseinternational.com.